Hi, welcome to another episode of Sipping with Simone. My mug for today is this mug. I absolutely lo love it. I bought it on Amazon. It says, hello, is it tea you're looking for? Lionel Richie, my Lionel Richie mug. It's, all call it's also called a Lionel Rich tea mug. Get it? So, hello, is it me you're looking for? So it's one of, also one of my favorite mugs that I love. And yeah, I'm going to drink tea from it. While I while we, I talk to you and while we have this conversation, um, I saw recently a lot of hubbub over Pastor John Gray's comments. Um, he was preaching a sermon with regards to women. So speaking of, hello, is it tea you're looking for? His sermon was about he who finds a good wife finds a good thing and how some women are walking in the spirit of girlfriend, which is why they're not married. Um... So there's been a lot of conversation. There are videos and thought pieces about this in terms of, you know, what's, what is John Gray saying? Is, she, is he um, shaming single women? I, for one, let me first say that I have the utmost respect for Pastor John Gray. I really do. I love his sermons. I'm like one of his biggest fans. I have subscribed to him on YouTube and I follow him and his wife on Instagram. I'm always looking out for new sermons from Lakewood. I enjoy his tutelage, his teaching. I find his sermons to be real and I'm not I'm not trying to suck up. It really and truly, I just love his preaching style. Um, also, Pastor Gray um, does not preach just, you know, from out of the air. He had been single for a long time. I think he got married when he was like 37. He was pretty sure he's going to die a virgin. And he has a beautiful wife and beautiful family. And so unlike many people who talk about singleness, when Pastor Gray talks about singleness, I tend to listen because this is not somebody who's talking about something that, you know, of what she doesn't know. Um, that said, I heard the sermon and I've actually heard the sermon a while back like last year and I didn't think much of it I wasn't offended or anything I heard the sermon and just kind of went on with my business and my day it's just recently that it's come back into public remembrance and um, I think what happened was Sierra tweeted about it she tweeted the sermon and said women need to level up and people, a lot of people took issue with that and took offense. Um, I re-listened, so I listened again to his sermon and the comments. And he actually made these comments in t on two separate occasions, two separate messages. One message, it seems like he was actually speaking at a women's conference. And, and that's the thing. A lot of times when we hear a sermon and we have an issue, or I see people online have an issue, um, they often never listen to the whole message to get the context. And so I wanted to make sure that before I commented, I had context so that I, I could make some relevant, educated, somewhat educated and informed um, comments. And I listened to his comments and I thought to myself, um, I'm actually, you know, even today in 2018, I'm still not offended. I'm still not offended. I um, listened to what he said about how some women are walking in the spirit of girlfriend. And I'll post the link to the, um, sermons below. How some women are walking in the spirit of girlfriend. And how if they want to get married, they need to walk in the spirit of wife. Because he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And you're not a wife until a guy finds you, something of the sort. Um, so the first thing I like to say is I, I didn't take issue because, I mean, that's basically what Proverbs 31 is about, Right? Um, when King Lemuel's mother is giving him advice as to who he should choose as a woman and he's go and she is going through this litany of characteristics, characteristics, like saying a woman, um, with who virtue is priced far more than rubies who could find her. Like she's so rare. She's hardworking and she gets up in the morning and tends fields and she dresses well and her husband speaks highly of her. Um, she's She's describing a wife in Proverbs 31. She's not describing a girlfriend, right? And I, what I got and how I understood Pastor's Gray, Pastor Gray's message was like, women should, single women, 
ought to, according to him, this is not necessarily you know, what I believe, but according to him, single women ought to act like they are already taken. Act like you're already loved. Act like somebody has already put a ring on your finger. Why? I'd like to think one good reason, one benefit of acting like you're taken is that you act like you're secure and you're at peace and you are at rest and you're no longer in that field of insecurity like many single women are where you're constantly picking at yourself and at your flaws and constantly questioning yourself and you're constantly wondering oh my goodness if i move overseas am i going to meet him will that make me more available or will that make me less available should i take this job because this job is in an isolated post so there's going to be less men you're you no longer have all those questionings um a taken woman in my view can relax I mean, a taken woman can relax as long as she's taken care of and she takes care of herself. But you see what I'm saying? So that's that's what I understood. Um, I also think to myself that taken women are, are allowed and then have permission to go about the work that God has given them to do. Taken women are loyal and hardworking, like Proverbs 31 shows us. Um, and that's not to say that girlfriends are not loyal and hardworking, but I will say that the only difference between a girlfriend and a wife is commitment. And there is a real problem if a girlfriend is showing loyalty and commitment when her partner, her boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever, isn't showing the same commitment. Like, I do have a real issue with girlfriends giving wife privileges um, to men, especially, who have not committed to them. That's a whole other story. So that's what I got from his sermon. Largely wasn't offended. But, 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 I will say this. I probably just brushed by it and didn't even save it in my, among my links on Facebook or YouTube, simply because as a single woman, I, or as a single woman, I am so tired of the laundry list and litany of things that I must do in order to get married in this society. I'm so tired of hearing um, people, mostly men, watching videos from mostly male relationship experts telling me the, th the one thing that I must do in order to keep a guy, three things that make his head turn, five things that make a guy text you back quicker. I am so tired and I am so done with all of that. And I am so done with the advice that is given. Some of it is good advice. Most of it is unsolicited. And most of it is even untested. Because what I have found in my very short time on earth is that you could be beautiful and not text back immediately and have a full life and keep yourself up and exercise and not be needy and and have a good relationship with your family and have a good job and and be sexually available you could do all these things and be a wonderful woman and still be single on the other hand you could be an absolute bitch and you could be ugly and you, which is you know relative and subjective but still you could be mean and you could be lazy and you could not cook to save your life you could burn water um, and you could like not even know how to boil water and still find yourself with many suitors. I have come to realize that when it comes to getting married, it is fortunately or unfortunately so haphazard, so by chance, so miraculous that it isn't even really dependent on you as a person. I mean, of course you have to. You should try to develop yourself and be the best person as you can. But I've learned that it you you do yourself a disservice. You'll go mad. You'll run yourself mad and go crazy if you're doing these things in the hopes that some nice young man out there will find you marriageable. So that's my issue. I'm like, I'm absolutely done. My, In fact, I'm in a spot in my life right now in terms of how I treat my singleness is like pretend like I will never get married. And what will that, what does a life not getting married look for me, look like for me? And just to go on in life and just do me. 
And at the end of my life, when I died, I die, I want on my tombstone, I want it to say, you know, Lord, I tried. Lord, I tried. I put myself out there. I, you know, tried to listen to advice. I prayed about it. I did what I could. I tried to be engaging and pretty and wonderful and fit and everything. I still died single. Lord, I tried. <laughs> That's what it'll say on my tube. So I created a YouTube channel. I blog, not for men, but just to develop my own capacities. But here I am without a ring. So I, Lord, I tried. That's how I am currently living my life and we'll see if that perspective changes but that's my issue my other issue is i'm also so tired of singleness being framed as an as a problem solely for women why is it all these people are giving women advice what about the men what about the men it would seem to me actually given the whole me too movement and times up movement that men need a whole leap of advice right now in our current society that men need mentorship and they need uh they equally need just as many relationship experts and people to sit them down or create a youtube video and tell them t 10 ways to get a girl you know how to be a decent man how do you have a conversation with a woman how not to sexually harass women how to be good how to be kind how not to ghost how not to neg i feel like men need this playlist but it's not out there in the same way that it is for women. And my fear is that if we're telling women to level up, and you know, Sierra's right, women do need to level up. We should all level up for ourselves. We all need to level up. But if we're telling women to level up, and we're not telling men similarly to level up, because they sure as hell need to, then what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a lot of women acting as wives and still finding boyfriends all around them. And we're going to have a lot of single wives. And that doesn't do anybody any good. In my last post, I talked about sex dolls. And I was reading the comments. And what came through most prevalent, in the most prevalent way through the comments, is that there seems to be this alienation between the sexes. We no longer, the genders, we no longer as genders, let's just take male and female binary genders, for example, right now, we no longer really want to talk to one another. There is, there's been such a uh, denigration, degradation, breakdown between the genders that we all seem to be trying to satisfy our own needs um, independently of one another. The Bible says that in the last days, men shall be lovers of themselves. And that's a whole other story, you know, but we are no longer trying to seek to be interdependent um, I have nothing against independence. Independence is so important. Um, and though we need to also be interdependent because at the end of the day, I truly believe men and women need each other. We all need each other. Um, but because we have been so hurt by one another, I think, and because we are so frustrated with one another, we there's this alienation and this distancing from one another and that does not seem to be helping either either gender i don't know how to solve that but that is something that i'm noticing um and so those are basically my comments um if we're gonna give advice let's make sure we're giving advice to everybody you know because men are also struggling too and unless we could both unless both of both genders could level up, we're going to continue to be frustrated and it makes no, it, it won't even matter at that point who's walking in the spirit of girlfriend. So those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Feel free to comment below. I'll try to comment back. I'll post also a really interesting blog post I, I wrote um, about two years ago. I interviewed some male, single male friends to ask them, why are you single? Because nobody talks about male singleness. <laughs> and I want to know why you men are single. And it was actually quite interesting and illuminating what they had to share. So let me know what you think. I'll post the, um, the sermons to which I alluded also um, below. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. And stay tuned for another episode. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe. I hope you have a great day. Bye.